Episode 2 was really great and all the fans are already waiting for the sequel and are asking different questions. What will be the new location? Who is the new anti-hero? However, soon we will see a new third episode, the release date of which you will find out in this video, which will be dedicated to Zubal. We have known this for a while now, but there is no information about who will be the main hero and villain of the new episode, and even though many people including myself were sure that it will be Martha Mildenhall, the reality is different. In the musical adventure you can notice an interesting detail related to Pomni. When Kane ordered her to sing, a shampoo on which we already know Orbsman appeared in the frame and I am 100% sure that it was a specific hint for the third episode. We remember Orbsman from the first season announcement, and we know that his location will be Spudsy's fast food place, where Jax will definitely end up. We also remember one of Gooseworks' posts, in which she showed a very strange Jax's outfit. Even though many people laughed at the maid outfit, no one paid much attention to it until Gooseworks revealed the secret of the outfit on Twitter, and said that we will see Jax in the third episode. And already, at least three leaks prove the fact that episode three will be about Orbsman and everything that surrounds him. But why exactly would Jax be the main target of Kane, and send him there? I think the location will be a small modern city, and each of the characters will work in some sort of factory, and apparently Orbsman's Spudsies is the worst place to go, and the Gooseworks leak hints at that. Don't even call us that again, will be uttered by Jax in the new episode, and I'm sure it will be addressed to Orbsman. We also remember that Jax was very reluctant to take part in the new adventure, and Kane was only able to force him there. In the second episode, Jax showed his real face, and instead of a bullied guy who always jokes about everyone, we saw a real maniac who is only interested in murder, blood, and violence, and the situation with Candy Canyon Castle confirmed it. Also, in one of the leaks of the beginning of the third episode, all the characters are happily eating candy that Kane gave them after the end of Candy Career Chaos, and only Jax with a disgruntled look throws away his candy while holding in his hands a whole bag of sweets. Perhaps, this boorish behavior on Jax's part was the basis for Kane's displeasure and Jax's further punishment. One Thumbler user asked, My friend keeps insisting TADC is a kid's show, even though I've said multiple times the next episodes ain't gonna be for kids. What do I do? And Goose clearly said that they will change their stance as soon as the third episode is released, which means that it will be much more epic than the pilot episode, and even than the second episode. And judging by the fact that the third episode will be not for kids, it is likely that we will see a lot more drama and unexpected plot decisions that will make us admire some characters and distrust others. I'm sure it's the third episode that will be the best of the first season, and there are a number of reasons for that. First, we all know Zubal and the fact that she is Gooseworks' favorite character. And also the pilot and second episodes told us almost nothing about this character, because in the pilot episode, Zubal was punished because she refused to participate in the adventure. And in the second episode, she was able to hide. And again, because she didn't like the adventure that the other residents of the Digital Circus were participating in. And many people were wondering why Zubal kept refusing Kane's adventures and tired of the endless questions. Gooseworks answered the question and sarcastically wrote, Have you seen these adventures? Thus confirming that everything we've seen before was just child's play, and the adventure that Zubal will finally take part in will be much more interesting, dramatic, and epic. And since, as I said, episode 3 will be all about Zubal, it's safe to say that this episode will 100% be an event that all fans of the amazing Digital Circus should look forward to. Also, remember the question in which Gooseworks was asked which of the episodes is her favorite, and she didn't give a definite answer, but clearly hinted that the third episode is one of them. And all these hints, leaks, and theories make me patiently wait for something great in the Digital Circus universe. And also I can't help but remember one leak in which Gooseworks described all new episodes with one word, and since it was before the release of the second episode, the word boy was dedicated to episode two. And since now we understand that the word boy was a reference to Jax, who became the main star of the second episode. So this leak contains keywords about the new episodes, and the word damn is very intriguing to me. But let's you post your theories in the comments about what might be hiding under that word. However, it immediately raises a reasonable question why at the beginning of the video I paid a lot of attention to Jax if the main character of the new episode will definitely be Zubal. As I said before, Jax is still one of the most mysterious characters in the Digital Circus because of his ambiguity. Episode 3 will most likely be the final episode in this trilogy, and we will finally get to know the real Jax and how he will turn out to be, is one of my personal main questions about the third episode. 
As we found out, Kane will send our rabbit to Spudsies to a very unpleasant manager Orbsman, who will apparently pay him minimum wage for his hard work. And since with each new episode, the level of artificial intelligence will become higher and higher, Orbsman should be several times more real than Gummy Goo, and his decisions and actions will be much more unconventional, which is very inherent to real live people. And in one of today's leaks, Gooseworks almost completely revealed the final relationship between Jax and Orbsman, and told who Jax will turn out to be. Don't ever call us that again. These words from Jax sound very unusual, because usually he's only happy if someone mocks or insults the others, but here he stands up for them. But what could have happened to make Jax change his views and attitudes so much? First of all, I think that after being humiliated and bullied by Orbsman, Jax realized how unpleasant it is to be made fun of or morally and physically humiliated and realized that his behavior before was very disgusting. And in order to survive in the digital circus and not turn into a kinger, he needs to stay on good terms with the rest of the digital circus. I have another theory that confirms one of the leaks that I haven't told you about yet. Everyone knows that the main object of Jax's bullying is the defenseless and mentally weak Gangle, who we see mostly in a depressed and crying state, and Jax has been happily taking advantage of this by making Gangle's life worse and worse. He's also used to her never responding to him and just putting up with it all, and in an effort to pique our interest, Gooseworks was happy to share one of Gangle's lines in episode 3. We all understand when that expression is used, and I have a few theories again. Gangle finally responded to Jax and punched him in response to his next joke, or Gangle had the courage to come fight Orbsman for bullying Jax. Either way, both of these actions will make Jax respect the crybaby Gangle, and maybe after that Jax will stand up for the rest of the circus and we will finally realize who he really is. All of this is a secondary storyline because there is no Zubal in it yet, which is what this episode will be about. First, we need to understand the reason why Zubal still can't decide on her gender identity and who she is and why she needs to live. Zubal is one of the youngest members of the Digital Circus and is only 22 years old. In part, she is still an unformed person, and this plays a key role in her problems. Judging by the fact that Zubal keeps a huge chest in her room with many different parts hidden in it, she can't even choose her own particular style that every character in the amazing Digital Circus has. Perhaps the reason is her past in the Digital Circus or in the real world. Let's remember Zubal's typical behavior in the circus. She's straightforward, a bit rude, afraid of absolutely nothing. And that's how we perceived her throughout the pilot episode and most of the time in episode two until the final scene, where we saw that Zubal can be vulnerable and very sensitive to the rest of the characters. And the fact that she volunteered to stay in the digital circus tent to prepare everything speaks volumes about her as a kind and positive character. Also, I'm sure saying goodbye was quite difficult for her. And she also gained Pomni's trust, which is a guarantee that the character is definitely worthy of praise. As I said, the third episode will not only reveal Jax, but also Zubal, who we will learn a lot about in the near future. Maybe she will be together with Jax in Spudsy's adventure, but in a lighter form than the rabbit, and it would be very symbolic because there is a special connection between them. Anyway, we'll find out soon enough. And finally, I will say a few words about the expected release date of the new episode. There was about six months break between the pilot and the second episode, but it was because by the time of the pilot episode release, the second episode was not even 1% ready because the creators were just testing the potential of the new show on YouTube, and since the success was much more than everyone expected, to eliminate such long delays, the creators started to make the second and third, and maybe the fourth episode in parallel. It also lengthened the release of episode two. That means that already at the moment, the main part of episode three is ready, which means that the release can be expected within two months. I think that the period between July 25th and August 5th is the most acceptable for the release of the new episode which will be the best among all the episodes that have already appeared. In the final of the second episode, we saw the warmth that Pomni has been missing for so long. I would even say she experienced friendly support from everyone except Jax. And after that, as usual, we went away from the characters, but one of the latest teasers showed us that in addition to Kaufmo, there is another equally important photo, Gummy Goo. And while everyone is enjoying the sweets that Kane gave them after Candy Career Chaos, only Pomni is grieving for her friend who spent so little time with her. After the characters eat the candy, they return to Pomni to comfort her, and then again, it's night, room, sleep, and the unpleasant cane. Who said that today, they will have a new journey, but this time it will be different from the events of the second episode. And although Zubal again refused to participate, this time Kane sent her there by force. And this is an important detail because as Gooseworks told us a long time ago, episode three will reveal the truth about Zubal. So they went to a mystical house with a 19th century atmosphere, 
and while they were looking around, they always heard some strange noises, but it was something like this that scared them the most. And then they meet Martha, who appears and disappears abruptly. And of course, everything is scary, but as soon as they turn back, they see the woman who looks like she is stuck in the 19th century, and she starts her story. A long time ago, she was the sole owner of this house. She had a large family and a strange pet, a seal. But at one point at home began to happen strange and even paranormal phenomenon. First, the doors began to open by themselves, then began to disappear paintings, and then people. And so Martha Mildenhall and her pet were left alone. And when they realized that all to blame for the tape recorder, they began to look for a way to get rid of it. And after hundreds of years of searching, they found a hidden tape that can destroy the tape recorder. But as soon as they decided to do it, that tape immediately disappeared and around constantly began to sound some sounds. And so Kane sent them on this amazing mystical adventure to find the tape and use it to destroy the tape recorder so that Martha and her seal could go to the world of ghosts and be safe that their home is now safe. Pomni, unlike the others, was the most shocked and apparently Kane had been organizing a similar adventure for a long time. Besides Pomni, Zubal was also surprised because she, like many times before, decided to skip the adventure and stayed in the circus. Martha Mildenhall left her pet as a navigator, and they all set off together to explore the mystical house in search of the cherished goal. And for a long time, nobody was confused that tape recorder should not be able to walk or move somehow, and only after a chance meeting with him, they realized what his strong point was. Let's remember Fudge Monster, who is also an integral part of episode two, but is not as popular as Gummy Goo, even if he ended up being a negative character. I'm 99% sure that the mystical house is complicated by the fact that there are dozens or maybe hundreds of monsters hidden inside it that are loyal servants of the tape recorder. And it is because of them that he's able to cause so much trouble for Martha and Seal. I think that all the characters split up to find the main villain would be much easier. And that's when Zubal will show his real face. We know her as a rude, arrogant, but at the same time, very sincere girl who always says and does what she thinks without hiding anything. If she doesn't like something, everyone will know about it. And most importantly, she is the only one who is able to oppose the main bully of the digital circus. At the same time, she can really feel friendly feelings and compassion for the others. And it was clearly shown to us by the funeral scene of Kaufmo. Zubal will reveal herself, and we will see that behind the mask of rudeness lies the usual fear of not being accepted by the others. And straightforwardness is just an unsuccessful way to express it. And while Jax will walk around the mystical house and look for fun, the others will support Zubal and try to raise her self-esteem and finally find herself. And they will succeed, and eventually, Zubal will lead everyone else. Since the digital circus is a very amazing place where anything is possible, even Seal will be able to talk and like in the second episode with Gummy Goo, Pomni will be able to make friends with him. And despite Ragatha's attempts to dissuade Pomni from one more stupid idea to return another NPC to the circus, Pomni will insist on her own because she is the only one who still has sincere human feelings and desire to help everyone else. And the realization that it is unrealistic does not scare her in any way, but even on the contrary, encourages her. While they will be looking for tape recorder, they will have to meet many creatures who want only one thing, to prevent the characters from finding tape recorder, and they are ready to do absolutely everything for the sake of their goal, because they will be so programmed. And when the final target will be waiting for them at one of the doors, it is logical that everyone will run after him, and since Kinger is the most determined, he will go first, followed by Zubal. And that's when the turn of events that no one expected will happen. Tape Recorder has thought of everything in advance, and as soon as the first character decides to go to the threshold of the room and falls into the pit in which there is a trap in the form of many monsters, the tunnel closes immediately, and the next characters will find themselves in a room that is also not as simple as it seems at first glance. This is the room of memories, and Zubal will relive all the fears she has experienced during her long stay in the digital circus, and as soon as she comes out, we will see on her face a genuine horror, and she will collapse on the ground without any signs of life. And at that moment, Jax appears with some useless statue in his hands and says another inappropriate joke. All the characters will have gotten back together and start looking for Kinger, who fearlessly destroys all the monsters. And we'll see the same old scene where he hits someone with a shotgun. The other characters arrive and Jax decides to show his coolness and throws the statue at one of the monsters, but misses and hits the painting behind, which is hidden the cherished tape that Martha Mildenhall needs so much. And after a short scene of praise, she inserts the tape into the reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder and then sends all the circus people home. However, upon arrival, Kane sees the NPC again and destroys it again. And at that moment, Zubal wakes up 
who has had enough of the new adventure, and we see the familiar Zubal again, who sends everyone away and says that she will never go on an adventure again in her life, but this time her words will have some kindness in them. And Pomni will be finally disappointed in their administrator, and will realize that the only friends she can have are the inhabitants of the digital circus. And then it's back to dinner and sleep. What do you think about my version of episode 3? And if you have your own theories, then welcome in the comments. Bye bye everybody. Bye bye.